let us learn what welfare catering is. We shall consider an army mess, as an example of welfare catering. Though, there are many other examples of welfare catering like prisons, orphanages etc. Catering for armed forces, is also sometimes referred as, welfare catering. This service is provided to armed forces, as a subsidy from the government, and soldiers posted at various locations, are fed, under this scheme. That was Amory. Nothing like loving you. You're listening to On The Map Radio. Here, we will go through the points to be taken into consideration, while planning army mess menu. First, it is a quantity production, and it is production of a few products for each meal. So the menu should be simple, and properly cooked and palatable. A good meal attracts them, and lets them enjoy the same. Second consideration is, generally a cycle menu is adopted, but there should be some variety to keep up the appeal of menu. Third one. The nutritional aspect should be given due head. Sufficient nutrition through food, is the requirement of the soldiers. Fourth consideration is that, where there is lack of professional staff in the kitchen, so there is need for simple meals, without any elaborate items. And the last consideration is, special menus, in addition to the fixed menu, there should be some menus for special occasions and events. For example festival day menus, independence day celebration, etc. Let us go through, challenges of welfare catering. First one is, the menu fatigue. It is nothing but the tiredness while preparing menu, especially cyclic menu. Because, it is critical task, to prepare good menu, with the considerations of different varieties, cost friendly, easy to prepare and non-time consuming, and so on. Next is, a large number of people to be fed, in a limited time. It is very important, to serve food on time, because, there are fixed meal timings allotted for soldiers, and in case of army, timing are followed, very strictly. Third challenge is, maintaining high standards of cleanliness and sanitation, is critical task. Cleaning, and hygiene should never be compromised, in any food service sector. Last challenge is, arranging adequate facilities, and managing them, is a challenge, like space of dining hall, seating arrangements, food, and water service, etc. Because, with these facilities, cost, and burden of maintaining them, also increases. In this section we will have look at the principles of indenting. First yield of a product. The yield of a particular commodity, has a huge impact on the indenting for volumes. All the recipes, should be updated with the yields, as we need to indent for the net weight in a recipe, and not for the usable weight. Similarly, when product is ordered, for a particular recipe, the cuts listed in the recipe must be strictly followed, to adhere to the cost and quality. Also, if one has to order 20 kilograms of fish, for a party, there could be various combinations available in the market such as 20 pieces of fish each weighing 1 kilogram or 2 pieces of fish each weighing 10 kilograms. The procurement of the fish, would depend on the usage of the product, as well as the maximum yield that one would get, out of the product with regard to cost, and quality. The cheapest item might prove to be expensive, if the end product is low. Some suppliers, now even sell preposition meat, so that the buyer gets an advantage, and there is a consistency in the product quality, and cost. Second principle is, type of event. The type of event, 
for which the food is required, also plays a major role in the indenting of food. A wedding function would have a huge range of menu, catering to up to 1,000 people, or sometimes, even more. When the variety is more, the quantities consumed will be comparatively less, as most of the guests would like to taste most of the varieties. However, in case of a conference menu, where the menu is limited, a good judgment, based on experience would determine the right quantity to be produced. Third principle of indenting is, the regional influence. Regional food also plays an important role in deciding the ingredients, for a particular item. People from Bengal, would love to eat seafood while people from North India would prefer chicken. People, from South India would eat more rice, while people from North India would prefer, roti or naan. Fourth principle is, service style. The style of service whether buffet or a la carte also determines the indenting and portion size of a dish. It is easy to predict the quantities for a fixed portion size, but the challenge comes ahead when food is laid out on a buffet for self-service. In many institutional caterings, a buffet is controlled by the catering managers, and strict portion control is exercised over expensive food items. But, in hotels, the food on a buffet cannot be controlled. This slide will introduce us to the indent specifications. Every indent format must have few basic specifications to complete the format. Indent format may vary as per organizations, but basic specifications remain same. Indent specifications are as follow. First is the cost center. The cost center is a particular section of the kitchen or individual kitchens, like specialty restaurant kitchen, coffee shop kitchen, banquet kitchen, bar kitchen. This enables chef to calculate the exact food cost of that cost center. Secondly, the date of requisition is most important, in order to know when it is prepared and when it would be received from stores. Unless correct date mentioned. Stores cannot supply the material on time. Third one, is the type of indent must be mentioned, if an individual indent book for each type of indent, is not available. For example grocery, dairy, vegetable etc. Fourth is the exact quantity of material. Unless the exact quantity is clearly mentioned, there may be confusion, at the time of issuing of material. The fifth specification is, the unit of measurement. The specified unit, of each commodity, must be mentioned, that is kg liter, numbers, etc. The sixth specification of the indent is, brand of material. The brand name of the material is mentioned in case of any special purchases which is not in the list of stores. The seventh specification is, the name of the person, who prepares the indent requisition. This is done to find any mistakes that occurred while preparing indent requisition. The last specification is, the signature or approval of authorization. Without an authorized signature, the storekeeper does not issue material. Have look at this indent specification. It is simple indent specimen, which consists of all basic specifications discussed, in previous slide. Thank you.